All right, karibu sana. This is why in the morning, welcome back. And this is the last segment of this morning show. And it's about to be fire right here. All you can do is move close to your TV because they're about to entertain you with amazing insights. But first things first, do yourself and us. And let's do each other a favor by jumping onto that hashtag, which is why in the morning on all our social media. And that includes Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and y 244 channel, YouTube. Instagram is y 244 underscore channel. By the way, to verify, Nela Blue Tick. So, gangsters who are social media. See my gangsters who are guns. Okay? <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> I write it for, for channel. Personally, you can check me out at Brian Sakona One. Sometimes I post, sometimes I don't. But anyways, if you want to see who's the best dancer or why in the morning, you should visit our YouTube, no, not our YouTube, our TikTok channel, which is Y254 channel. And Natalie is doing an amazing job right there. And I could jump on to record TikToks. To know who has still left feet. <laughs> but definitely I'm not the one. But anyways, away from that, we have an interesting question we had asked you on all our social media platforms. And we'll be sampling your feedback to us the tail end of this uh, show. Hey, my Nalisati question was liar as a son. Shout out to Oguda. I was a man, Nabi was squeezy. Nabi. I'm not going to turn Nabi, but I don't know. Kunam to Malu and Juan it on a B. I can hear Gina. Saka could guess Ninani. But Nabi was squeezy. Akisema, ama kuna kitu yashai sema, ukadaut kama kweli ni mtu wa mungu. Especially regarding your story, uh, the Malindi cult, the Pastor Mackenzie fiasco. You know, for me, it's, it's really shocking. Up to now, like, there's a family of, a whole family. Father, mother, son, daughter, kids, including cousins. Omepotea, how do you come out alive or not? But then my question in my mind is, at what point do you filter out and get to know that this person who is preaching to me, are they preaching from a point of, you know, they're coming to me in the name of God, but from the word of God, which is the Bible, or, walenda tu maali wa kambiwa, eh, mina wana wakona koli niya kuongea, na kuambia watu vitu zina wahapen here. How do you differentiate between that? And uh, <laughs> we're going to delve into that and many other things. But joining us live in studio are two powerful gentlemen. You will like them. Uh, the first guy is uh, John Rai Wekesa. I believe that's how his name is pronounced. John Rai Wekesa is <laughs> a radio news anchor immediately sitting next to me on my right. And then next to him is Kelly Bravin Amisi. He's a freelancer. You know, I don't know if you've ever heard of Chris Brown. R. Kelly, Kerry Rowland, Kelly Bravin. So he's, he's like one of those guys. So today is about to be fire. So come close to your TV. But first of all, you guys, good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet you. I'm going to feel fit. I'm feel fit. For the first time, you know, appearing here. Okay. It's a good environment. Right. Right. You love, love the ambience. I love, the I love, I love him too. Myself. Myself. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a beautiful morning. Hopefully, you'll have a good show. Right. Let's, let me start from you. What do you do? I'm a freelancer. Okay. Basically, I write articles and blogs for companies and I also do dissertations and uh, academic papers for you know for students right. yeah either in country or abroad oh, wow that's some that's some good money bro <laughs> depends but <laughs> yes, good money good coming money. through right there yes right. right dissertation has to do with uh, with something with research yes right? you have to research the topic widely okay. and come up with a conclusion yeah interesting powerful yes okay personally I'm a news anchor I'm okay. also a show host at Shine FM Okay. I'm a poet. I do write spoken word. Okay. I'm also a production manager somewhere. Yeah. Okay. These all are just referring to me. Like, I hold many positions. You wear many hats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they say you can't be a jack of all trades, but it's amazing how you juggle in between yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Right. And you're still also part of Y254 family. Now you've joined us. Yeah. I've temporarily. <laughs> yeah, as an intern, I've joined you temporarily. Okay. Yeah. But hopefully, uh, uh, wishing you all the best. You know, you never know how things go. Yeah. So, so let's get into it. Uh, the history of Pastor Mackenzie Mime Nishtua, by the way. And uh, to a point, uh, we were having this conversation with my co-host, Rukona Juliza, Ukienda Mali Kwa Church. And kuna zile vitu tuze nyi utarealize. Nyewe, hey, umesema hivi na umekoti yo scripture. It looks true. But when you do a little bit of research and self-searching, unakuta it, it, it's something else. Una, how can you differentiate between the truth and lies, especially in this religious setup? To a point, it's an extreme now. You see, in a church, when a man of God, let me use the word, the word man of God, when a man of God is preaching to, the, to his audience, 
lazima I refer to the scriptures. You have to refer to the scripture before going further and explaining that scripture. But when you just find a man of God preaching, 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 going further and even speaking in tongues without explaining or rather referring to a scripture, that means that is a false man of God. That is not a true prophet. Okay. So you have to refer to a scripture and explain that scripture further in details. Okay. Yeah. What if he's using that scripture to even manipulate you to a point? Give, give an, and it shall be given to you. But then the context and the angle at which it's being used. Of course, also in news we take angles. Yeah. The, even history and Mackenzie, it, it, it will be taken in different angles. Some will say it's a cult, some will say it's a church, some will say it's a religious organization. Also in context of preaching, kuna angle. Like him to Tasema. If you don't give, then don't expect to be blessed. But then, as a person who is conscious and aware that, yes, I know I can give, but I can't give this because this is the only thing I have. Mm -hmm. How do you create that in people's minds to a point you're not giving everything and then I'm going home to Lalanja? You see, in a church, like when you claim that you are a Christian, Miminim Christo, you have to know the Bible. For you to okay. tell me that you are Christian, for you to tell me that you are Muslim, you have to know the Quran well. Okay. So that you can even explain to me what it says. Right. You see, in the Bible, there are only three people who fasted. That is Moses, uh, I'm forget Jesus, and I think Joshua, I think. Those are the only three people who fasted in the Bible. And when God told them to fast, he did not tell them that go and tell your audience that you need to fast for 40 days and night for you to become a Christian. No, he told them that you are the one who is supposed to fast. Hakuambia, and then muambiwa fast when you are fast. So at this point, the pastor, the, the Mackenzie pastor, but the, like, if indeed he is a true man of God, he is the first okay. The way Moses fasted alone. Moses we need to fast. He did not go to tell the Israelites that we need to fast for 40 days because God has said, no. God told him himself, you have to fast. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll come back to that, but I'm really scared <laughs> on that angle. Yes, Kelly. I think it comes down to your idea of self, your self-image right. and your self-identity. Right. Because the reality like is uh, uh -huh. anyone can quote a scripture, anyone yeah. can read the Bible. You will find right. that atheists, they know the Bible even more than some Christians. Right. So anyone can read to you a verse and tell you what they think about that verse. And if right. they do it with enough confidence, you will find that they can convince people within the crowd about the idea. Right. Now what happens is, if you have a low idea of self, your self-identity is not solid. Yeah. You will find yourself um, go, doing extra, giving extra. Okay. So self-identity is how you see yourself. The image that you have of yourself in your mind, how you think about yourself. Right. Some people think they are deficient. They think that they are lacking or they are not good enough. When you right. think you're not good enough, you will want to find something that fulfills you, yeah. that completes you. But it could come from a place of uh, abuse, because most people that yes. feel insufficient, maybe uh, now family. <laughs> some, oh, me, I never had a dad, or me, I never had a mom. So there's usually some energies in you. They call them energies. I don't know, in science or what. Others will say it's spiritual. Yes. But now if a person is coming from that place of, you know, luck, and yet it's affecting their confidence. Would you say they have a problem and they should fix it? Because now you're saying it's self-identity. Yes. You but do of course you problem. need help though. You have a problem. Yeah. But how do you fix this problem? A problem of self, most of the time, can only be fixed by you. Not, not okay. anyone else. If you have low self-esteem, only you can change that narrative within yourself. Right. But what happens is uh, you meet a religious leader, you are lacking. The religious leader are, they are sharp people. This, a con man is short for a confidence man. They are confident people. Okay. They can oh, see like the lack in you. Sure. Con man is a confidence man. It's a confidence man. man. So they see okay. the lack in you and they tailor their approach right. to you. They take advantage of you. Yes. And you see with many people, you see things happening on media. You see an accident has happened here. This person has gotten conned here. Everyone always thinks that it can't happen to them. You think that you are the smart one. Right, until it happens. Until it happens to you now. Because you think you're smart, you think that it can't happen to you. But right. the con man is seeing that. The religious leader that is uh, duplicitous is seeing that. Right. And they tailor their approach to get you and to manipulate you. Not really manipulate you, they just give you what you want. They tell you what you want. Right. Everybody wants something. And if you can appeal to what they want, right. you can get them. 
Do you want just on that note before we proceed, what if in a, uh, this, this example, yeah, somebody is praying for a job, they've never gotten a job, and we're looking at it from a religious perspective where there's families where like people struggle. Before the first person will succeed, they had to go through so many other channels, and this included some spiritual help or spiritual intervention. But then here you are, you're coming from such a space, and then you meet someone who has such a spiritual authority, and they tell you one, two, three, and it works. And then later on, they top it up with other things, and then it piles up, and then it ends up as this incident in Malindi. Mm. How do you uh, break down that? It's called social proof. If you see people getting conned in the street, I'll, I'll get back to you. What happens is there's the con man, and then there are people who pretend that they're also playing that game. To give you confidence, you see that this person is winning, so you also think that if they are winning, then I can also win. You see that this person went to this religious leader and got the job. So it gives you social proof. It gives you validation, makes you feel safe. Because you see it work. Now you also want it to work for you. But now if it worked and then this person is kicking it, does it mean it's, it's a good thing or it's a bad thing? I think that's now another question. Mm. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? It worked for them, yes. Yes. Yes, well, Yambi was give her, he is a red, shika pete, do the extreme, don't eat for seven days, and it's working. In fact, they're getting millions and they're helping. In fact, they're changing lives now. Mm. How do you question that? That is true. But you see, in life, Life is very funny in that you'll always pay the full price. You'll get the millions, you'll get the money. But you'll find that people are, people are uh, very miserable in those conditions. But you won't see that. You will see the front they present to the world. Okay. That's what yeah. you'll see. You will not see the other side of it. You'll not see what they had to do or what they are doing currently to be where they are. You won't see that. Okay. And that will sell you the idea now. Social proof. You'll see that it's working for them. And they will tell you, they'll be there to comfort you. They'll make you feel close. And you'll feel part of something that is uh, bigger than you. That right. is where people get caught. Right. Yes. You see, uh, yes, your you reaction? See, yeah, yeah. You see, when you want to know that this person, or rather this man of God, is not a true man of God. This pastor is not a true man of God. He will come and tell you, even though you are poor, you don't have anything. But he'll come and tell you, you have to give me this and this so that you can achieve this. That is a, a, a false man of God. Like there is but what if she's, we'll go to, we'll go to mention a metadia, a clause in the Bible, yeah. that says give without, in fact, give without the other hand, without the left hand or the right hand knowing. Yes. <laughs> and there's people that give yeah. and it works. And there's people that don't believe in even giving. But even, even look at uh, international organizations, even the Wazungus, they believe in giving, charity works. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how do you debunk that to a point you're not being conned, you're not being scammed, it's not an extreme? That is my question. You see, even if you're told to give and you don't have, what will you give out? You only have 30 shillings and you need help from this particular man of God. Instead of him helping you to achieve more, anatakeyo tatibobiyako. That is not a true man of God. So you should be vice versa. Yeah, yeah cool. a true man of God, even if you're suffering, he'll come and tell you, you know what, I know you're suffering, but I have this. Unga, can you take it? But if he tells you, I need that 30 bob of yours, that is not a true man of God. I met one person. He, cl he was claiming that he was a man of God in the streets of Nairobi. I can be a, uh, I'm a man of God. And in 2010, your mother was sick of Alzheimer's. And I'm like, yes. In 2010, my mom You know, I, I don't know Kamalikwa Alzheimer's, but Ashai Komgonjo. Yes, and I yesterday you ate Ugali. And you know, as a leader, you have to eat together. Is that okay. prophecy? That okay. is nonsense. <laughs> but then uh, the confusion comes in. We don't have awareness. Uh, if you look at, um, I mean, I'm really scared of this topic because it's not my favorite. I swear to God, it's not. You look, when you look at the big uh, religious organization, don't want to call them churches, especially those that, are, that have massive followings, you realize if you compare the teachings and those that are not well known, there's just something unique about it. And then the number of, uh, the number of women actually, it's only, it's, usually it's women who go to these churches yeah. a lot. Is it because there's no information Ama people are desperate for miracles or quick success or people come from a place of you know we are sad we needed hope and this is the only person who could have given us hope and here they are telling us to slaughter all our chickens sell all our 
all our, all our equipment and wealth and we join this to to a boarding school ya church to a channel story ya home kabisa kabisa as in what is happening in people's minds okay. to a point you do that you see women especially women wanapenda mahali penye kuna prophecy mahali penye ukienda pasta kikushika hivi unaanguka already those are not all women yeah, like, like not all women <laughs> yeah not all women, <laughs> not all women. Yeah. Not all women. Yeah. Yeah. but more than 50% you need research in the family more than 50% of you sure yeah <laughs> you know i'm scared more than so. 50% of women like there is a church i'm not going uh, to mention that name uh, okay. that church ukiongelea okay, tu a negative side of that church no utapigwa mao utapigwa mm -hmm. mama. Mm -hmm. Is it because the pastor is feared or the religious leader is feared ama they believe to possess some certain powers in that ukimongela vibaya? Aki command 1 2 3 is going to happen to you. No, they just unajua uh, pastor ikikushika hivi uanguke they see that is a miracle. Already that is a miracle. Oh. And I, I, I can tell people it is not a must for you to, to to be touched and you know the holy spirit and you you know to speak in tongues so that you are, you, you are in the right place. Uh, ukitaka ku, ku, kuenda church it's not even a must to go to church i don't know why i'm saying ukitaka kuenda church you see god a little bible you can read a bible from home from uh, uh, the comfort of your zone you can read a bible there okay si lazima uende church ushiko wanguke ndio ujue that you, you are saved it, it does not happen like that uh, yeah another question what is the solution now because this thing has come at a time when <laughs> it's, it's a dilemma. Mm -hmm. Yes, the religious organization is highly supported mm -hmm. by the current government at hand. Mm -hmm. And this situation here, Paul McKenzie, is really confusing as well. Is it a cult? Are we calling it out as this is a cult, Ama, this is a religious leader that has killed people? You know, where, where do we get the wisdom? In, in, in as much as we are calling this issue out, but we are not attacking the church. We are we are neutral, but then we are not all, we are not also neutral. We are giving solution mm -hmm. that should we, we we should vet such people. You know that is a cult. That uh, that is not even a religion. We, we are not supposed to call that a religious leader, because for a human being, you know, you cannot tell me that you can fast for forty days a night. That can never happen. Okay. You can only fast for seven days. Now kabisa for only seven days. But okay. you're telling me that you're going to fast for 40 days, 40 night. Okay. That cannot work. Even, even that, that McKinsey pastor. Okay. I know he has not fasted for more than 10 days. Yeah, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear Kelly's reaction. Okay. And I said something. Right. He said that if you want to know a true religious leader, this is not someone that will ask for something, but someone that will that give you something. Give you. Yeah. Yeah. you don't yeah. have hunger, they'll give you hunger, they'll not ask for you. Is that days. true? Yeah. No, it's not true. You know why? Even that one that wants your money, if they see that you are, uh, you, your guards are up, they will come there, they will give you something. Yeah. If they see, they're already that, aware. If they see that you are smart, they won't just come and ask, give me. No, no, no. They'll first give you something. They always have to bring you close. That is why I'm saying people think that it can't happen to them. Because they bring you close slowly. They won't just come give me. No, no, no. Sell your shamba. No, no, no. Okay. They'll bring you close. And then once you're close enough, once you're all caught up, that's when the, the ask comes in. Yeah. How can you prevent this from happening? In reality, is that you, you can do your best, but you really can't prevent it in a way. Not just in religion, such things happen in all spheres of life, even in personal relationships. People get conned. Con, being conned is such a broad uh, word. Okay. But what you can do, First, you need to have a good sense of self. Yeah. You, need to you mentioned have, you need this to self this. a lot. It's, it's, <laughs> you mentioned it a lot. How can people lot. have a self, a sense of self? And that is awareness, I believe. Yeah, that's awareness. awareness. What's awareness? Right. Awareness is really your thoughts. And you see, the funny thing is, uh, what you think is what will always happen to you. Oh. That's just life. For example, all the time or just once? <laughs> Let me give you an example. Let me give the viewers an example that they can okay. resonate with. If you're a fanatic of cars, if you love cars. I love cars. You love cars? Yeah. Do you notice that when you think about a particular car, you're thinking about a Volkswagen Golf? Right. Do you know that when you're in that Matatu going to town, you'll see so many you'll, of them? You'll see of them passing. Yes. You say sure to attract what you are? Yes. Okay. What, whatever you see in the world is what you hold within you. Okay. You see what you are. You don't see things as they are. That is why these people have a leeway, because they get into your mind mm -hmm. and they make you see what they want you to see. 
not what okay. is. That's where the manipulation comes in now. Yeah. So how to prevent this is first of all being grounded in yourself. You have to be grounded in yourself. You have to be yeah. self-reliant. Yeah. As long as you rely on objects for happiness, yeah. you rely on other people's validation for happiness, yeah. you rely on being part of something bigger than yourself for, to feel gratified, yeah. you become prey in that situation. It's not bigger than yourself. Does the Samson Bible not say depend on God? But anyways, my dilemma is, the people who say, I know the universe has the best for me. And the Samson Bible says God is the universe. And there's people who believe in affirmation and chanting, what are they called? Uh, chanting incantations, where you wake up and say, I'm amazing, I'm powerful, yes. I love money, I attract money, yes. I have a relationship yes. with good things. And you stay in that vibration of, of, of good words. Yes. But then how do you cultivate that in people's uh, minds and people's lives to people that have been blinded by very sad and a dark reality? Yes, we are all uh, victims of circumstance. Okay. The affirmations don't really work. Oh, they don't work. Let me say this, not the way you think they do. If you're just waking up and you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you are uttering words, that doesn't work. But okay. if you hold it within your mind, if you believe it from the very fiber of your being, it okay. will work. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. Let me put it this way. If you want something and you, inside, your, inside yourself, you don't think you can get it, you find that you won't get it. Even though you're saying that you want it, yeah. If you doubt yourself, your words will bring forth that doubt and that is the experience that you will have in very many instances. So if you go into an interview and you think you won't get the job because you don't have connections, you won't get the job. Because even the way you carry yourself, you think you're carrying yourself confidently, but you're bringing off that vibe. The other person can tell, but they don't know how to explain it also. They, can't, they don't know what's happening also. But you'll get it. I think I should be a body language expert very soon. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like being able to read people's. Yeah. Like there's bosses who say, That's the moment you thing. stepped into this office, I knew you'll get this job. That's because your thing. confidence, yeah. your posture, yeah. even your explanations show confidence. Yes. Body language, by the way, is very right. important. You need to know how to read people. The body never lies. They can try to lie, but it never lies. When someone wants something from you, yeah. if you are keen enough, there's a way they will present themselves. Oh, no, when something is off. When something is off, yes, there's a way that people will present themselves. All right. I'd like you guys to give uh, your personal accounts of these religious extremes and, and how did the story go? Uh, maybe I can start with you, John. Like, which one? Maybe you could also have heard it or maybe somebody close to you yeah. or went through it. Uh, how sad or crazy, interesting or worse was it? Okay. Personally, I've experienced one. And this is one that my brother... Ali, Ali experience in a certain church in Nigeria. I'm not going to, I, I, I'll always not mention the church. Please don't. Yeah, but there is this pastor, when he kwa, 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 kwa his followers, and he tells them that when you want to succeed in life, you have first to get off your clothes and get bathed. And funny enough, Alikuwa anaosha the ladies. He was washing the ladies, the whole body in church, in front of the church in the pillar. The whole body. Alikuwa anaosha. Alafu when it reaches to uh, time ya men kuoshwa, he only washes their foot. That was how crazy it was. Which year was this? The, this event happening? Like five years ago. Oh, yeah. Okay. That was how it, it was happening until my brother left that church. Because it was going crazy. So, so my first question is, uh, how did your brother connect to this kind of, you know, mad situation? How did he connect to this madness to a point, Amefikapo and Naoshua Migu? You see, <laughs> what was this person offering? You know? Okay, he was not offering something, but he was, it, it was through, I don't know, it was connections. He had a girlfriend, and the girlfriend took him to that church. Oh, and the girlfriend said, you know, I, I, I was having, you know, skin issues. And I went to that church, Nikaoshua, and right now I'm getting healed. Uh -huh. And my brother, when he realized that I'm Oshua and she's getting healed, I come up with the girlfriend to, yeah. to witness. Yeah, according to him, uh -huh. but when he reached there, he witnessed the whole thing happening. Wow. 
And so, so were, were there any offs, like, uh, apart from, because that is already off, yeah. that's not, that, that's not even, that's not godly, <laughs> that's evil, <laughs> that's evil. <laughs> like being undressed and being washed so yes. that, so that you, do, you get what? So that you get whatever you want. In life? Yeah, in life. Oh, I thought it was like, get money, get a car. On, on a condo or something. something. <laughs> this was just me and own specific. <laughs> if you come to me, tell me I want to get a hundred million dollars. <laughs> so if you're washing my legs, then I'm guaranteed. And you know, funny enough, yeah. for me personally, I believe if you're a prophet, when I come to you, you have to know my problems. I'm not the one supposed to tell you that I'm suffering from this and that. You're supposed to tell me that I know you're going through this and that. But when you come to me and tell me that what is literally your problem, you see, that's not a prophet. That's why your prophet anakuja na kuambia, tell me your problem before I, I wash you. Can't you think that that is a false man of God? Oh, shocking, shocking, shocking. I'll, I'll come, come to you, you but I'll come to you with, what is the difference between a mganga and a, a clear, a clear, clean man of God? Let me use those words. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Bravid, what, what's, what's your interesting story on the same? Um, first of all, let me start with one that is very rampant among the religious uh, institutions in Kenya. Right. You find that within churches and these religious places, there is a sort of uh, community being built around it. Whereby, yeah. if you stop going to this church and start going to another church, you are blacklisted. Yes, no, you are blacklisted by these church members. The pastor mm -hmm. tells them not to associate themselves with you, with you. because you no longer go to this church. That All is right. something that is very rampant across very many churches. In is that not cultic now? No, it's in every church, almost every uh, church. This is in every church? Almost every church. Like I've if seen I this. stop going to my church, they'll blacklist me from going to another. Yes, yeah. ask, ask any person that goes to church and is in, within those circles, they'll tell you. Oh, so I've seen that happening severally, and uh, that's why I don't, really, I, I don't really see why I should go to church. You don't go to church? I, I don't see why I stop. Because <laughs> you stop. I, I saw these things <laughs> and I was like, I don't, see, I don't see any benefit to me. But I've also seen a worse situation whereby a lady yeah. was convinced by the pastor to buy land. She, she wanted to buy land. And you know what happens is the pastor is a confidant. So you tell the pastor everything. There are ah, people who are like that. Yeah. So once the pastor realized that she wants to buy a piece of land, the pastor convinced her to put the land under his name. Um, and she did it. All interventions of the family, when the family tried to intervene, the pastor started saying that, oh, no, your family, they want to bewitch you. This person wants to bewitch you. This person does not want uh, this good thing for you. So now the family became like the lady's enemy. Stumbling block. Yes. So the lady ended up uh, buying the land, putting it under Writing the pastor's it. name. And what happened? Uh, sadly, Lastly. she passed on. Uh, the Eventually, she got the sense she got the sense that she was being played, and uh, when she tried to get out of that, the pastor told her that uh, your days are limited. And uh, yeah, she died. She died soon after that, and uh, well, that, that was it. And the land was in the pastor's name. Huh. And what is the family saying? What can you do? When you try to guide <laughs> someone and they see you as the Where is the court here? Where is the rule of law? Where is the constitution? How can you prove that in court? It's very difficult to prove that in court. Yeah, and you know the justice system in the country is very slow yeah. and it also costs you money to get justice. So in the end, she, she is gone. There's nothing much that you can really do. But uh, it was a really, really a sad case. And you can see that how extreme this thing can go. It can. Yeah. It's the, the case in the coast is just an extreme. But the same problem manifests itself in smaller ways, these small ways, whereby a pastor wants to tell you, don't marry this person, marry this yeah. person, you know? Is this it? Yeah, God has told me. Which God? God has born us in Yambia. <laughs> Why is God telling you? I'm also human like you, right? Do you know why this conversation is scary? <laughs> I can only imagine, you know, they're called gatekeepers. You know those gatekeepers yeah, who, get who keep tabs on all on all outlets that talk about religious content. Mm. So I'm trying my best, man. Me, I don't want to be a victim. Because I've been a victim before, yeah. yeah. I know. You know, they say once beaten, twice, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm limiting myself. But now how do you tell the difference between a clear person and Mtumanyako fishy, you know? Let me give this an this example. Or <laughs> the, 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 the reason I also stopped going to church is because there was a certain church that I was going in Oshago. The, 
this Sunday, next Sunday, last Sunday, zote. Aki preach, it's all about money. Toa, mungu anasema utai kitu kidogo. Toa fungu la kumi. He don't want coins in church. Mtu wa kitu wa coins ataki. And uh, funny enough, yoki, yoki, nini, what do we call it? Ya kueka hapo ndani pesa. I'm just forgetting its name. Anayueke na kuwa transparent. So that everyone knows oh. pesa inyo metoa. So there's a certain shame yeah. that comes with when you don't give. When you don't give enough like. money. So unapata mtu anenda kutoa coins hapo hivyo inalia ntini. And so what will just, happen next? What will happen next? And I don't want you in my church because I've, I've been repeating this time and time that I don't need coins in my church. No. So, so in a bid way, because he only wants the, the, the notice. Yeah. Mm. That, was, that was what it was happening then. Uh, uh, but the, there's, a, the, there's, there's a point you mentioned that uh, mm-hmm. What one ambiana? Oh, nilika, like your brother situation, Aliko Nigeria, the girlfriend come and be one, two, three, I can be a Is it is 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 it what's what's happening on the ground? As in Mutu and Amalia Saidika and Ambianga Mgine. But then Unakuta Uma Saidika, yes, but Uma Saidika at a very dark place and yet you have yeah. no awareness. You see, Wango and I say God's time is the best. Hato okay. kienda kwa prophets wangapi. Kama mungu wa mesema it will happen next year. It will definitely happen next year. Yeah. That's the scripture saying. I'm not the one saying it. But you know, I'm also, yeah. co- I'm also trying to get the image of what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Mungu amesema. Mm-hmm. You know, Mungu amesema. And most of the people, you'd agree, Bravin, also most of the people come to you, God ameniambia. Have you been in a matatu and then somebody came and said, Mungu ameniambia. Ningia kwa matatu. Niombe, blah, 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 blah. It happens. And after that, and I collect one, two, three. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. And I can't know who is genuine and who is not. But then, Mungu amesema, you know. How do we get a space and have this overview of God at Lisema? I think that's where we are stuck. Because a lot of people get conned through Mungu wa meniambia, Mungu wa mesema. Mungu wa mesema ukuje, kama umeva black and white. Mm-hmm. Ama last night Mungu wa nionyesha, ukuje kama umeva red and yellow. Mm-hmm. And then we pay 10,000. Now back you kwadi next month. Mm-hmm. So how do you debunk this Mungu wa I think, first of all, a big red flag is Mungu amesema and then something specific to you. Mungu amesema that you should not do this, you should not be with this one, you should do this instead. That is a big red flag. Because really if God wanted to influence you in that way, God would influence you if you believe in God personally. So why, why is someone telling you that uh, God is telling you don't do this job, go and do this other, other job? How? That's a big red flag. Don't let anyone tell you that God has said that, you know, Kelly, you, you can't marry this lady. This lady is not right for you. God has told me to tell you that uh, leave this one. There's another church member here or a, a member in the religious organization here that this one is good for you. No, 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 no. Anyone that tells you God said this about you is a lie. If God said this about the situation you are in, then that is acceptable. Let's say you, you've lost your job and then they quote a scripture telling you about hope. I, I, I really don't know the scriptures. Yeah. But I'm sure there's, there are passages about hope, about repentance and that kind of a thing. Yeah. That is okay. But God is telling you something specific through the pastor. Yeah. I, I, don't, I really don't think so. Another thing, you are, you are paying money to be prayed for. You are paying money for another human being to put their hands on you, believing that they have a, a sort of a direct connection. They have, the this most magical, high, they have this magical power in that Akisema. God bless you. Really, really. You go and get here. That, that's a fallacy. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that, uh, if they really have that direct connection, then their life would be so awesome in a way that you can't even imagine. But for some people, it's working. Uh, it's working. I remember my co host, right here, Vala Lisema. She had a friend, Major Kwana, go through that. Unalipa, unambiva, and it goes and it works. Can I comment on that? Please do. There is a scientific <clears throat> experiment known as a placebo whereby they take okay. subjects, let's say we are all sick, and they right. give us tablets. But right. you find that one of us will be given a tablet right. that is not really medicine. Uh-huh. But uh, at the end of the test, you'll find that even you that took the tablet that is not medicine, you are healed. You're Why? Healing. Because you believed you are healed. So it can work because you believed that it will work, and so it works. So it's not a belief system. It's yeah. a belief system. It can also work that way. Uh, you can go look it up online, a placebo. Yeah. You can check I, it out. I, I think I know from placebo. Yeah. Now, uh, to you, bro, do you feel like people are so hopeless? People are blinded by problems, 
and uh, we live in a bubble and we need to exit that bubble but now who is going to give us the, the information that we need but Bravin uh, al-Alisema itself itself a, a sense of self mm -hmm. That means awareness. How many people are not aware of the reality of life? Like they just, I'm scared, oh, kuna sokwa ako maali, tu, 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 boom, ako apo, one, two, three, this shall happen. Here you are in a crisis. How easy is it? You see, like literally right now, tukiangalia, the cost of living is literally high. Okay. Na unapata mtu wakiangalia this cost of living, it's high, anataka kuenda, at least apate pesa za haraka. And the only way to get that money is through the prophet. And then I'm going through this, I want money. Prophet and I'm okay, you want money, give me this, then get what you want. And I think as a, as, as, as a government right now, Kenya na faifanye, kanisa zote ambazo aziko registered under the hey, government. Be careful. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. Like, like you see as a pastor, just yeah, like right. we as journalists, uh -huh. we, we go to school, kusoma. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That is communication. Okay. We read communication. As a pastor, you also have to go to school. Theology. Okay. You, you study theology. Mm -hmm. That's how it should happen. See, kon man tu anamka na say, I want to open a church. Then he goes up and opens a church. That's why unapata kuna watu anakuwa code hapo ndani, wengine wanakufa hapo. You have to go and study theology first before come up, coming up and opening that church. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bravin, do you think people are so hopeless and in need for quick help and they're blinded by pain or just disaster? I think uh, life can, uh, can put you in a tough spot. If you're poor and you don't know where your next meal will come from, you know, that is when people can sell you dreams and you'll believe the dreams. You really believe that if I put this 20 bob here, I can win 100 million, <laughs> you know? Yeah. A rich man will never think like that. That's the reality of things, yeah? Yeah. So what happens is, uh, really, there's nothing much that the government can do. Regulating is a good idea, but uh, really, even the ones that have gone to theology school, yeah. it's not that they're any better than the guy who just woke up and decided, I, I want to open a church. Probably, that guy is the honest one. Maybe that guy was a thief, a mob, justice who kunje and until, uh, you know, the guy became saved. You know, once you see death, you, you can become saved. Maybe that's the genuine one. Well, the one who went to the school... <laughs> He's seeing it like a, like a business, you know. And more on that point, you know the, the largest religious organizations are also the richest. Yeah. And why is that? Where is this money coming from? And you know, we have this theory whereby it is tax-free. I don't know if it's true, but I get the feeling that it is true. It's tax-free. Every other donations, job has taxes. Yeah? Donations and funding. You know, it's tax-free. Uh -huh. So really... Um, if you look at this thing objectively, you'll realize that religion is a big industry. It is a money maker. Uh -huh. And anything that has big money like that, you can't just come and infiltrate it and try to make reforms. It, it won't work. You cannot regulate churches in Kenya. It will be very difficult. No one will agree. The congregants will not agree to it. The pastors will not even look at you. They, they, they won't agree at all. It can't yeah. work like that. Lazima uh, Tongelei, we have like six minutes before we exit. Uh, what is the difference between a Christian Christianity and religious religion because I, I believe those are two big different entities True. a person who is a Christian and a person who be, not even a person now as entities individually a Christian and Christianity and religion True. what is the difference now and which which side are we on <laughs> and what are we even talking about I'm I'm lost. Say, uh, there is a I don't know why we're measuring on Christianity there are so many religions religious yeah. but anyway Buddhism, yeah. You know, the rest. Christianity and religion or Hinduism and religion or any other of these religions and religions, uh -huh. these, are the, these are just denominations. It's a big uh -huh. tree. These are just leaves on the tree. Mm -hmm. The branches. Now, the problem is that many people think that being religious is uh -huh. showing up on Sunday in a nicely pressed suit. Being, the being a Christian yes. or being a religious? Being a Christian. A Christian. Christian many people yeah. think that uh, to be a good Christian, you have to show up you have to be pious, having to look so humble. You have to give because when you give, you receive. You have, to, you have to do these things. But you see, that's not human nature. At the end of the day, humans are just animals. We are smart animals, but we are animals. What does that mean? That uh, what drives us is self-interest. If you try to suppress your self-interest, your dark side, there's a philosopher called uh, Kalyan. 
Oh, talks okay, about the shadow, shadow and the dark side. There's that part of you that is really dark. If you mm. try to suppress it, it will yeah. find a way to come back in uglier ways. So that's why you yeah. find someone is trying to become so holy. Ebu, e pause for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Are you talking about another version of that Bible in the verse that says, they cast out demons out of this body. But then when the demons went, Zikakosa place, Yakrudi, yeah. Zikaita, like yeah. Zingine. <laughs> Zinarudi, Zinarudi. Is that another version of that? <laughs> yes. If you try to suppress yourself to, to, to become in a straight line, that okay. you should only do this, you can't do this and that. Right. That pull will really pull on you and you'll become worse. Let me give you a, a quick example. Okay. If you try to quit doing something, let's say you, you smoke. An addiction. Yes, if yeah. you try let's to quit addiction. smoking and then now you're counting days. I've not smoked today. Kesha won't smoke. The other, you'll smoke, you'll relapse. Okay. The only way to quit is to stop oh. thinking about it. That Let's, use porn. Let's use porn, because a lot of people watch porn. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only way to quit anything is to stop fighting it. Once you start fighting it, you really can't win against yourself, you, you know? You really can't win. Same shot you're fighting you. You're fighting you, you're fighting what you are. Carl Young said that uh, for a man to change, the only way a man can change is to first accept himself as he is. That's the only way you can change. But, but you know, society would say, ah, if you do this, then you're evil and you're going to hell. I'm at the low will. Mm -hmm. If we find you doing this, you are yeah. dead. Can I say but then here you are mm -hmm. fighting it like you're saying. Mm -hmm. you know, how, how do you thrive as a human? Because I can only imagine the battles happening in your mind and in your spirit mm -hmm. and your body. You know? Okay, you, you see, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. That person that is trying to put you down because you're a sinner, you don't know them. They're probably just like you. And you know when someone hates you, they hate something in you that is like them. That's in them. Yes, that's how it is. Another philosophy so like don't we hate to see in other people yes. what we don't like so about ourselves. You think you hate someone, but really, uh, you hate them because there's them something that mirrors you. That mirrors you, that you see in them, that you hate about yourself. Oh, nice. You guys get those lessons. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we exiting? I want to sample feedback uh, in, in 30 seconds. Yeah. 30 seconds. Go ahead. So, for me, religious and Christianity. For you to be a Christian, there is only one thing that you need to do. Okay. Set your mentality. In that, you just believe that God exists. That is enough. Okay. When you just say, or when you just you know, create your mentality that God exists, that is enough for you to be called a Christian. Okay. That is so, all. So, so. Yeah. Uh, before we exit, uh, Kamau Musenangu says, good morning, pamoja sana hapa Kiamwangi, Division Gatundu South, Kiambu County, on a watch. And then there's, and I told Kimani Wafafa, I'm a Wafafa. <laughs> Asama, good morning, tuned in from Matara, Tea Factory, well represented. Uh, Pablo Moja, Nasema Ruiru is watching, shout out to Ruiru. Uh, for means Mbon and Sema, good morning, Gong, Gong tuned in. Ibra Jacob and Sema, true, a true prophet, that is regarding the question, will tell the truth at a common in buyer, but false ones will tell, tell people what they want to hear. And exactly, people want to hear something. You know, mtu atake kuambiwa story ya work hard. Aha, there's another one here, and ito Adimilo Kingori wa Maguma, and sema, the name Stephanie sounds pretty. Na keka, four green love emojis. And then aka sema, Kinangop, Nyandara County, well represented as usual. And then aka sema, Nabi wa Kwanza, kuwa doubt na ye ni Mackenzie. Eti wa shirika wa sinye, wa sile, hii Kenya nitahama ni nde kiambu. Hey, it seems like kiambu ndo kuna soft life. And then the last one, and it was Pierre Raffin, and I said, good morning, why to for four? Moya Niko locked in sana. And the rest, including Aunt Dennis K.E., Lewis K.E., and Waweru wa keyboard. Thank you so much for your feedback. Social media, faster, faster. We'll, we'll do a part two of this conversation because it cut and it can't end social media very fast. Instagram at Krishna John Rai, Twitter at Krishna John Rai, Facebook, Krishna John Rai, and TikTok, Krishna John Rai. Yes. At Kelly Brevin or on all socials, I'm only on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Okay. So, so uh, and, and I think we can call it a day. We will do a part two if the production allows. But that's has been an interesting conversation, by the way. What do you think? What are the extremes that you also experience as well? Tell us on that hashtag, why in the morning at Y244 channel at uh, Brian Sako 101. And by the way, remember to follow us on TikTok and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We call it a day. See you tomorrow for Entrepreneurship Tuesday. Have a fantastic, have a banger Monday, okay? Because we are having a banger as well. See you tomorrow.